In 2022, the European Commission has been working at full steam on the implementation of the Chemical Strategy for Sustainability. I'm looking forward to discussing the achievements of the first year and the expectations for the coming period with Christina de Avila, Head of the Sustainable Chemical Unit at DG Environment. Christina, can you tell me what are the main deliverables you're focusing on? So during 2022, we have been working in the Commission to prepare key pieces of legislation that will contribute to achieving the commitment set in the Chemicals Strategy for Sustainability. In some cases, we have already adopted uh, the Commission proposal. It is the case uh, for the proposal for a regulation on the eco-design for sustainable products, as well as the proposals uh, revising surface and groundwater legislation. The new Eco-Design for Sustainable Products initiative, which was adopted in March of this year, comes from the political willingness to make a shift in our consumption patterns. It is very much linked to the commitments in the Chemicals Strategy for Sustainability, focusing on the consumption part of a European growth strategy. The objective of the Commission's Eco-Design proposal is to make sustainable products the norm on the EU market and to reduce their environmental impact throughout the value chain. The take, make, use, dispose model must be avoided. It has been found that much of a product's environmental impacts is determined at the design stage. Acting at this point of the life of a product is therefore key. Under the revision of the water legislation, the Commission is proposing to update lists of water pollutants to be more strictly controlled in surface waters and groundwaters. The 2025 uh, substances with well-documented uh, problematic effects in nature and in human health will be added to the list. This includes the PFAS group, a range of pesticides, bisphenol A, and some pharmaceuticals. The new rules will also recognize the cumulative or combined effects of, mix of mixtures, broadening the current focus, which is on individual substances solely. In addition, standards for 16 pollutants already covered by the rules, including heavy metals and industrial chemicals, will be updated. And four pollutants that are no longer a new white threat will be removed. We have also finalized the revision for the classification, labeling and packaging regulation, also known as the CLP regulation. And we will be hopefully adopting this revision before the Christmas break. This is a milestone in global chemicals regulatory landscape. We are introducing new hazard classes for endocrine disruption, both for human health and environment, for persistent bioaccumulative and toxic, or very persistent, very bioaccumulative properties, and for persistent mobile and toxic, and very persistent, very mobile properties. The new hazard classes will allow us the horizontal identification of chemicals with these intrinsic properties, which will in turn allow to have a more coherent regulatory response to these chemicals across legislation. We have also advanced in the preparatory work for the revisions of important pieces of legislation, such as the Cosmetic Product Regulation or the Toy Safety Directive, and of course, REACH. We are finalizing our impact assessment and are starting to draft the revision of the law. The objective of the revision is to make the law fit for purpose and to respond to the scientific evidence on the risk associated with chemicals, which has been reflected in the ambition set out in the chemical strategy. The main areas for this targeted revision are as follows. First, the information requirements, as part of the registration dossier. In particular, to be able to oper operationalize the new hazard classes in CLP. And we have, of course, a specific focus on being able to identify endocrine disruptors. Second, the registration of polymers, which are currently exempted from this general obligation under each. Third, taking better account of co-exposure to multiple chemicals by means of introducing a mixture assessment factor in the chemical safety assessment. And finally, a reform of the authorization and restriction regimes for the former, for the authorization, to simplify and streamline the system, and for the latter, for restrictions, to extend the existing generic risk management approach to restrict the most harmful chemicals beyond uh, carcinogens, mutagens and reprotoxicants in consumer products. The concept of essential use will be part of this reform. So all in all, as you can see, 2022 has been an extremely busy but an extremely productive year. It seems that the regulatory changes will bring more obligations on industry and authorities. But the strategy also refers to simplifying and consolidating of legislation. Can you tell us what is happening in this area? Uh, moving towards a one substance, one assessment approach is the most important initiative in this regard. As you know, the EU regulatory framework on chemicals is comprehensive and complex and consists of more, over 40 pieces of legislation. 
There are differences among the legislative pieces in the assessment of chemicals. Assessments are triggered at different times by different actors and they're based on different data sets. They are performed by the various uh, scientific committees and they use different methodologies and they have different transparency regimes. So the initiative on one substance, one assessment aims to improve the effectiveness, the efficiency and the coherence of safety assessments of chemicals across legislation. The chemicals strategy announced a number of actions to achieve this objective and we are preparing three legislative initiatives for the next year, all planned for the second quarter of 2023. First, the legislative proposal on streamlining the assessment of chemicals to EU agencies. Second, the legislative proposal for a basic regulation of the European Chemicals Agency. And third, a legislative proposal on better access to chemicals data for safety assessments. That is quite an ambitious package of measures. Could you please give us some more details about what these proposals will be about? Yes, of course I can. So, first, uh, the legislative proposal on streamlining the assessment of uh, chemicals to EU agencies will reattribute the existing work on uh, safety assessment of chemicals currently performed by the Commission services, by contractors uh, to the Commission or by the scientific committees hosted by the Commission to EU agencies. This consolidation of work into EU agencies will ensure the best use of existing resources and expertise available in the agencies. It will improve the robustness of the assessments and improve the coherence of the assessments across legislation. We have already proposed some reattributions of tasks as part of the revision of individual pieces of legislation, such as the proposal for the revision of the Water Framework Directive. For those pieces of legislation that are not going to be revised in this Commission, we are preparing an omnibus regulation that will amend the attribution of tasks. Second, ECAS Basic Act is being prepared to improve the governance of the agency and ensure the sustainability of its financing model. The proposal will simplify and clarify the rules under which ECA operates, optimize and rationalize the operation of ECA's bodies and adjust ECA's mandates to the new tasks reattributed to the agency. The proposal will also ensure the flexibility and optimal use of the combined resources of ECA coming from different parts of the EU budget. And finally, the work on the legislative proposal on better access to chemicals data will look into four key aspects. First, we will establish some IT tools for sharing data and information on chemicals and broaden some existing ones to cover all pieces of legislation. Second, it will remove legal obstacles to the reuse of data and better streamline the flow of data on chemicals between EU and national authorities. Third, it will extend the principle of open data and the relevant transparency principles from the EU food safety sector to other pieces of legislation on chemicals. And finally, it will enable EU and national authorities to commission the testing and monitoring of chemical substances as part of the regulatory framework when further information is considered necessary. You've given us a very comprehensive overview of an ambitious regulatory agenda for chemicals in 2023. Can we also expect important initiatives for the competitiveness of the chemical sector in the EU? Of course they are, indeed they are. So um, uh, we are currently finalizing the first stage of uh, the Safe and Sustainable by Design Framework for Chemicals and Materials, which provides companies clear guidance on how to assess safe and sustainability of the chemicals and materials. The framework is complementary to the regulatory changes driven by the chemicals strategy, including the revision of rich CLP and the regulation on eco-design for sustainable products. As a non-regulatory measure, the framework aims to drive industry's innovation efforts into safe and sustainable by design, with research and innovation activities. We will soon adopt a Commission recommendation launching a testing phase to collect feedback from stakeholders to ensure that the criteria for safe and sustainable by design are operable. This is a unique opportunity for industry to get involved by applying the framework in their innovation processes and to become first mover on sustainability. That sounds very interesting and a great opportunity for industry to shape the future criteria to determine what are safe and sustainable chemicals. From your side, in the European Commission, will you support industry? Yes, we will. We will support industry in the testing processes by providing methodological guidance and collecting feedback on the experience gained in the framework application. This input will serve for the revision of the framework and for the definition of the safe and sustainable by design criteria. 
In addition, research and innovation funding supports and will continue to support the development of safe and sustainable by design chemicals and materials and the required tools and methods. The Commission pro proposed in October 2022 a research and innovation plan for chemicals in order to mainstream the objectives of the chemicals strategy across funding instruments and support the industrial transition to safe and sustainable chemicals. We would also like to invite research and innovation funders across EU, national and private funding programs, as well as researchers and innovators to support this strategy and to contribute to its implementation. When and how can industry and other stakeholders apply for these innovation funds? The Commission is about to adopt the Horizon Europe Work Programme for 2023-2024. I strongly encourage industry and other stakeholders to get involved in the Info Days for Horizon Europe, during which the Commission will present the 2023 calls. The participants will have the opportunity in these Info Days to ask questions on what's new and learn how to draft successful proposals. Moreover, there will be brokerage events that will be dedicated to consortium building. I encourage everyone to check the Commission's website for the exact dates, or exact dates for these info days and for the different clusters of Horizon, uh, of Horizon Europe. We see in the strategy that the EU describes itself as the global leader. Are there any initiatives on the global front? Well, they are for sure, tiered. As I mentioned before, we have been working on the inclusion of new hazard classes in the classification, packaging and labeling regulation. Of course, this regulation implements at EU level the UN Globally Harmonized System for Classification and Labeling of Chemicals, the UNJHS. We are therefore bringing to the UN level the need to include these new hazard classes also under UNJHS and proposing that this is included in the work program for the next biennium. We are also starting to work on how to implement the commitment in the chemicals strategy that chemicals that are banned to be placed in the European market should not be allowed for production for export. We are in early stages and I cannot say, say too much, albeit our initial plan is to be able to deliver as foreseen in the strategy by 2023. And finally, maybe it's also worth mentioning the work that will be done to establish the Science to Policy Panel under the UN Ages. We are starting preparations now and I can assure you that the EU will be an active contributor to this work. Christina, thank you very much. It's great to see that the Commission really acts on the promise to be a global thought leader. I'm already looking forward to the contribution of the Commission at Chemcon the Americas 2023 in March in San Francisco.